Oh, it's time for class. Class is in session! Roll call! Bueller. I'm gonna be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Welcome, classmates, to the Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Pete. I'm Tyler. And I'm Joseph. And today we are reviewing an interesting pick. This is going to be an actual fan pick from the Wheel of Destiny from the Patreon. Mm -hmm. An Unfinished Life. I think it might rain today. You haven't been right about the weather since 1972. Einer and Mitch lived life by their own rules. Nice wheels. (laughs) No way. I like the flag. Without an orange flag like that, you might look ridiculous. But they never Ah, expected their time would be interrupted by someone on the run. Is this the the past? Is this the actual trailer? Yes, it is. I don't want to be here either. It's yours. She's yours too. Telling me I have a grandchild. Einer, please. You telling me? Just like enough to get us out of here. Are those my dad's things? Yeah, they are. Where does he live now? He's dead. Did your mother tell you that? <laughs> yeah, but she said you're dead too. Now, two men <laughs> unaccustomed to change. I wonder if it's hard being that drunk this early in the morning. Oh, oh now look what you waited for. I'm gonna be your new waiter. Sorry for the mess. We'll have to learn to adjust. I got some groceries for dinner. You got any more improvements you want to make around here? But maybe Mitch might want to work on something. Did you ask him about it? Of course you did. Mitch. Feel inspired. And discover the only thing harder than holding on. They call them accidents oh, because it's it. nobody's fault. My son's dead. Your granddaughter's not. And neither were you. Is letting go. I want to know what killed my boy. I killed a minor. Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> did you hear anything unusual last night? Somebody poking around down by the river. It's a police report. He was my boyfriend. They can't do anything, Anna, except keep an eye on him. There's an errand in town I'd like to run. Be careful with that errand. From the director of Cider House Rules and Chocolate with Johnny Depp. I see you back here again, I'll kill you. You've seen too many westerns, old man. That doesn't exactly work in your favor. <laughs> you ever wish you lived a different life? No. There are people everywhere who think they got dealt a bad hand. Aha! <laughs> finished life. I had a music teacher who was a lesbian. You guys are gay, right? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought you had a really I like that hands. part. You never told me that. <laughs> All right, well, an unfinished well. life. That was a hell of a trailer. Yes, it was. <laughs> so this is a movie from director Las Halstrom. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that L A S S E. So I don't know if it's Lasse, mm-hmm. Lasse, Lasse, Las, Lasse. Las. Las. Yes, and what a prolific director this this man is. He's he's directed 77 credits on IMDb. Jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna go from the from the newest ones back. Okay. Hilma, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms, A Dog's Purpose, Safe Haven, The Hypnotist, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, Dear John, Hachi, A Dog's Tale, New Amsterdam, The Hoax, Casanova, An Unfinished Life, Ava, ABBA, The Definitive Collection, oh, that's sweet, The Shipping News, Chocolate, The Cider House Rules, The Golden Hour, Lumiere and Company, Something to Talk About, What's eat, or Making Gilbert Grape, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, What's Around the Big Five, and then, and, and then, and then some. There's a, there's a lot. This goes way, way, way back. A lot of early stuff was music videos, mm-hmm. but based off of that, you you can tell he's got got a, a a vibe of heartwarming tales with maybe like a sad twist to it or whatever. Sure. And this movie is starring Jennifer Lopez, Robert Redford, Morgan Freeman, Josh Lucas, Damian Lewis, Cameron Manheim, and Becca Gardner as the as the daughter. A pretty good cast, and this is a movie from 2005. It is rated PG-13. Probably could have been rated G if it wasn't for the punching and stuff. Yeah, I think PG would be... Sorry, accept- PG, yeah. Would have been an acceptable rating as well. Yeah, very... very uh, it's a dr- uh, categorized as a drama, family, and romance, which mm-hmm. I didn't see a whole lot of romance. There was some fucking... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about the romance. Okay. Right. Desperate to provide care for her daughter, down on her luck, Jean moves in with her father-in-law from whom she's estranged. Through time, they learn to forgive each other 
and heal old wounds. That's a double meaning, healing old wounds. Yeah. Get it? Bear yeah. attack, yeah. wounds. Okay, mm. anyways. <laughs> None of us have seen it before. Uh, yeah. Nope. Tyler, where did you, what time did you watch this? This morning, I'm assuming? I watched this at 4.45 in the morning. Okay. <laughs> on a Saturday, specifically this Saturday. Yeah, on a, today. On, yeah, on a Saturday. This at very four, morning. Yeah, this very morning. Okay. Uh, because every, as everyone knows, I like to keep movies fresh in my mind for the show. Okay, that's and, fair. If I have to describe this movie as my initial thoughts is, one, this is a white America conservative wet dream of a story. Okay. (laughs) All right. And two, if I could describe it as, as two people making love. Okay. This would be (laughs) lights out, missionary position penetration for the sole <laughs> purpose of procreation <laughs> okay so i okay i like this all right so that, that that's that, that's where i'm coming down on is as god intended yeah. and i think this movie it's it's not I, I feel based on the trailer, a lot of people would think this was a bad movie, like just a stereotypical sort of lifetime movie. Mm-hmm. I described the movie that we reviewed last week as a lifetime movie, but that was, as Joseph eloquently uh, put, was it was an, an intention. Yeah. So that makes sense. This, uh, however, not very intentional uh, as a lifetime uh, as a lifetime movie uh, story wise. Uh, but the acting of uh, Redford and uh, J-Lo and everyone else in the cast was really well done. Um, it was an entertaining movie. Um, I, I think I think I, th- I think this there was a lot of there was a lot of chariz- charisma towards Robert Redford's character. And towards him or from him like he was charismatic yeah i yeah i think he was charismatic okay and that i think what the movie for me did initially was of course i wouldn't revisit this movie or seek out this movie but i wasn't i wasn't like eye rolling or groaning or anything okay. like that i was definitely engaged the plot is very very simple and like i said this is a white american conservative wet dream of a movie because okay when you did you you, you, well, well, you, you said that already i know i'm just reiterating <laughs> okay. that point and anything anything else uh, yeah no, i i it, did you like it it's you know is a strong <laughs> word i'm not saying i hated it and i don't think i wasted my time uh but it, it it's it it's 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 it's, it's a little iffy, like I'm, I'm towing the edge what of. What are you talking about? Get to it, Tyler. I'm trying to. I, Just say it. I don't, it, don't be, don't hold back because of Mitch's feelings. I'm not holding he back. He chose to assign I'm this, not, this I'm movie. Not, no, I'm not holding back. It's, it's, it's what hard the to. Hell, are you talking about? It's hard to quantify how I feel about this movie because <laughs> we've, been, on, we've been recording this show for four years, Tyler. <laughs> Oh, it's been it's that been long. Four, almost four and a half years. Oh wow. How do you feel? How do you like this movie? It was okay. Okay, there you go. It was great. Just, awesome. it, 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 it was okay. It was like the middest of mid movies that I've ever seen before. Hell yeah. Extra mid. That's a perfect. That's a, there you go. Okay, that's that's yeah. the tagline for the show. <laughs> the middest of mid movies. Great. All right, like, Joseph. What is what's your what's your initial reaction? First thoughts. As I was watching it, I was waiting for something to happen, <laughs> and then by the end of the movie, I was still waiting for something to happen. <laughs> And then when it was over, I was wondering what I had just watched because I felt like I didn't watch anything. <laughs> I felt like I watched it was like a it was just like a balloon just filled with nothing but air. <laughs> <laughs> what? And like, it was a shell of a movie. That's what it, that's what a it felt like. Movie. Like it had it had very brittle brittle bones. Okay. This movie had. <laughs> mm. And those brittle bones were made up of all these different plot lines that went nowhere. Mm. And all these little stories with J-Lo's story, with Morgan Freeman's story, with with Robert Redford's story, and the dead son's story, Mm -hmm. and how it ties into sort of the rest of these other stories. Mm -hmm. I 
I don't know. It was just it was like it was just like a very low just wave, just nothing nothing rising above remarkable. Mm-hmm. It's like a lazy it, river at a water park. <laughs> I, I guess I don't know. I have, more, I have more fun on the lazy river. It's like a lazy puddle. <laughs> <laughs> it was not that deep. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah, I felt like I watched nothing. I felt like I, <laughs> I felt like I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I didn't gain anything. I just, I just. It was like I looked. I was like, I was. Like, I might as well have been like just watching. <laughs> The the TV shouldn't have even been there. I I, I just spent an hour and a half looking at a wall, and I would have gotten the same amount. Jesus Christ! (laughs) Hear that, Mitch? Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. It was like I don't know. The performances felt very like it. It seemed like it was a movie that was like being made with an intention to be like. A widely renowned movie, like it was trying to like oh. this was going to be the J Lo's performance of her career. I get it. Yeah, I see. And and then Robert Redford and Morgan Freeman are in it. <laughs> <laughs> like and I was watching. Nothing. And then the and then the music was just like very like stock sounding, mm, yeah, just like bluegrass country folkish type mm-hmm. that you would hear in any like I don't know lifetime country movie where or even like a. Even like a holiday movie where the city girl goes to the goes to the country and was yeah. gonna find reluctantly reluctantly fall in love, but yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't get anything. Literally, I didn't get anything from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got nothing out of it. All right, that's fair. Did you like it? Yeah, it was, it was, it was not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got nothing out of it, but it wasn't that bad. No, no, it was it. It's, it just was. Yeah, it wasn't. I didn't th- find it anything entertaining about it okay i was like fighting sleep okay no that yeah i know how i feel yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay cool that's fair enough yeah all right so my initial thoughts revelations chapter three or book three (laughs) chapter 15 through 16 says i know your deeds that you are neither hot nor cold i wish you to be either one or the other so because you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold I spit you out of my mouth. What? They say that in the Bible? That this movie is a lukewarm ma- mouthful of water. It, it is neither pleasing to my tongue nor my palate. <laughs> <laughs> but it hydrates you. I, not if I spit it out. <laughs> I forgot about this. And uh, it, it, feel, it felt, the, as I'm watching it, it felt, you know, if they had an SNL sketch and they needed to make a, a lifetime country movie starring Robert Redford, it would be like the same thing. It would be this trailer. They would have just made remade the trailer shot for shot and had the same okay. announcer and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it and I'm like, it's not it wasn't bad. Like nothing about it was particularly offensive to me. And I think that was the point. Mitch said seven point on IMDB was a shock to him. I'm absolutely shocked by that too. <laughs> Hundred percent. Not and again, not because it's like a terrible movie and people are gonna be, oh, it's a one star movie. But I'm surprised most people are not like five. I know, know those people giving it 10, 10 out of ten stars. That was Mitch, the fifteen year old Mitch. <laughs> that was Mitch. He had he, <laughs> he's every time I get an email from Mitch. By the way, it's a side side tangent. Every time I get an email from Twit Mitch, it comes from a different handle. He's got like nine email addresses. <laughs> I think he did that back in Canada in Toronto and was made a hundred emails and then just logged into IMDb on all of them and rated it 10, and 10 stars to get that right rating up. That's... It's Robert Redford. He knew exactly what he was doing when he was on screen and he was doing stuff. It was cool. It was yeah. like, he was in, yeah. he was in the, in, in the uh, bad boy cowboy. Yeah. I liked it when he goes, he, he the, the, her ex-boyfriend, the abusive ex-boyfriend comes out and visits town. And he goes, I'm going to, he just walked into his hotel room and was like, I'm helping you pack. And yeah, he's, that was he's cool. gun to his head, and then he's driving gun to his head, and you're just like, that's scary. The cop is... It's it, pretty cool. The cop is completely useless because Robert Redford's character is committing multiple, multiple felonies. This is a small town. 
Yeah, I small mean, town law. Yeah, I try that in a small town. And that's why, it, <laughs> and that's why I stand by my initial thought statement. What's that? It's a wet dream. Corporate Republican conservatives wet, wet dream. dream. Yeah, it's a conservatives <laughs> wet dream story. But those those scenes were fine. I thought it was pretty cool. Like he when he beats those two guys up in the in the diner, I was like, okay, that's cool. He kicks a little ass. He's a little hard around the edges. And yeah, he doesn't like her for whatever reason. You find out about that later and all that stuff. But it's, it's a very middle of the road story. Yeah. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, why is it? Blah? Why is this? I'm like walking through a swamp <sighs> to get to the end of this movie. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We were, me and Brianna watched this last night and we're, I can't remember what it was we were going to watch afterwards. I think it was, I can't remember. It was some, some Christmas movie we we're going to revisit. Mm -hmm. And we're like, and I was like, hey, let's watch it after this. And she goes, it's going to be so late though. And I'm like, no, this movie's almost over. And I paused it and I'm like an hour and five minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> There's an hour and five minutes, and then I was like, "Of course, they haven't even let the bear go yet." Yeah, because you know yeah. they're gonna release the fucking bear. Yeah, yeah. the it's, whole story is telegraphed throughout the whole thing. It's, it's like, if you've yeah. ever seen a movie, you're gonna know how this movie ends. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a movie. Have you before. seen a movie? Yeah, then you'll you'll know how this one ends. <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, the stuff that I did like about it, I won't, I'm not just gonna shit on 100 percent because I think the the movie does is not without its merits. Sure, but it talks about forgiveness is a constant running theme throughout whatever and. Morgan Freeman forgives the bear. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Robert Redford forgives Jennifer Lopez. And he forgives the bear as well. The, he also forgives the bear, yeah. And then the the waitress at the diner who who is assaulted by those young men. Yeah. Forgives those young men. No, she can't she can't, <laughs> she, can't she can't forgive herself. She can't oh, yeah, no. because, because she let her daughter drown, yeah. which was like you don't even really know that character. The mm -hmm. character was in the diner and you're like, Oh shit, she's talking to the lady from the diner again? Oh cool, okay. And then yeah. she drops with it. She let her daughter drown. I definitely have breast cancer. Yeah, and you're like, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. Why is that the character that's talking about that? We have two people who have dead children in this mo in this movie, <laughs> and one of them blames themselves, and the other one blames they're his the unfinished lives. Like, and I guess that's where the, the name comes from. It's like my life is not finished until I'm able to forgive myself. And it was on the <laughs> it was also on the gravestone uh, as well. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. On that yeah. rock. Yeah. Yeah, the rock. Couldn't even afford a proper gravestone. He's I, just I, like That's a Western <laughs> funeral right there. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it. Don't even put a rock down for me. Just huck me out the window. I'm fine. Make a sand castle. Yeah. But <laughs> and, yeah, same here. Same and, here. Anyways, yeah. it was it was a slog of a movie. It was unoffensive, but I think the reason why it felt that way was real is because the, the it was written by a husband and wife duo uh, mark sprague and his his wife was what's her name a virginia chorus sprague and she has two credits to her name he has only three hmm. before this he wrote everything that rises a tv movie and gross anatomy um from 1989 which oh. was like a a drama about a fisherman who goes through medical school with a bad attitude hmm. and you're like okay it's it's a movie. It yeah. has the structure of a movie. There's a, a first act and a second act, and there's some really bad, abusive m makeup on Jennifer Lopez. I thought yeah. she, her face was just dirty for like <laughs> 10 scenes. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like a bruise or anything, and it's like off of her mouth, so it looks like she just was leaning just, on her hand like this and or, yeah, yeah. after she was claws. fingerprinted or something like that. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. It was, it was fine. It was <sighs> wasted, a waste of talent, though. And time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, as opposed to what Tyler says about um, this is a a, 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 light, a lights off missionary position stri stri strictly for uh, appropriation. appropriation. It's a very movie vanilla movie that was yes. not a waste of time for him. I feel like I could have used my time much better. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get into it a little bit deeper. I do want to say one thing. Okay. okay. Um. I, I don't like the phrase a waste of time when it's talking about movies because only only because you need context. Like mm -hmm. if you're if you're all you're watching is blockbuster movies or the top rated stuff on IMDb or the top rated every Oscar best picture winner, so you're only getting like this very specific view of mm -hmm. of the cinematic world. And you gotta watch some lifetime movies. You gotta watch <laughs> some the abominable yeah, snowman I, meets I, Sasquatch. I, 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 I've been preaching this throughout the four and a half years that we've been doing this show. Have you? Yes. You say we need more mid movies. That's not what I'm talking about. This, but <laughs> that's not that's not what I'm talking about. Mid mid okay. movies are their own category. What I'm saying is you need to have 
the, you throw the, some real stinkers the, in there. Yeah, you need to have a full scope of movies. You need mm. to watch foreign films, black and white films, okay. horror trash, okay, slashers, saying. basically grindhouse pornos. You need to watch Best Picture nominees. Children's and, movies. Yes, kids' movies. You, you know? need to have uh, all of the colors on your spectrum, essentially. Yes, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and there's, there's no way for you to... In our modern landscape, we have movie podcasts, and we have YouTube reviews, and we have yeah. a billion people who are reviewing movies who can tell you what's good and what's not or whatever. But still, finding those hidden gems and those little stuff, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You asked me a, a few... Like maybe a month ago, you're like, why are you watching this movie? We say that a lot. Actually. Yeah, you do. You do say that. You question our, <laughs> our motives a lot. And it's I'm doing it because, like, I've never seen... What's the hype of the Police Academy movies, right? Uh, Winslow. It's a, Yeah, sure, Mike Winslow. It's a great person. I I, I committed to all seven of them because I'm... Fo- <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm about that. <laughs> because I'm following this binge movies challenge that I was for specifically for that season. But having watched all those, I have this completely new worldview of what the 1980s were like and I, i'm looking at my parents like you guys allowed this you, <laughs> you allowed this to be, them money you gave this movie money yeah and they made fucking seven of them and they're the worst i i just i'm i'm going on a tangent i'm sorry that's okay I'm, go ahead i just i just had an interaction with kleberg from force five on twitter mm. and it was like some prompt about enough positivity show your lot your all half star reviews and I don't have a whole lot of them. I, I, I'd rather like a movie than hate a movie, right? But Sure. But yeah. I took my snapshot of all my half-star and one-star movies. I have 1,300 ratings on uh, Letterboxd, and there's, there's only 24, 25. Four of them were Police Academy movies. <laughs> and I think three of them were Hell uh, Hellraiser movies. I, I can't tell which is the worst franchise, to be honest. I'm traumatized from both yeah, in different yeah. ways. But it's like... When you watch a movie like all the, that shit mm-hmm. and the good stuff and the unfinished lives of the world, which is somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. you really have like a basis of comparison and you're like... At this, least it's not Hellraiser 4. Uh, sure. Something like that. <laughs> 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 and I respect the people who want to make these indie but low budget movies or whatever or a movie like this where it's let's just put Robert Redford and Morgan Freeman in a movie and we're guaranteed to get the boomers out there. Yeah, they had really great chemistry on camera. Just the whole idea of them being partners, working on a ranch, and then Morgan Freeman's character getting mauled by a bear, and then him, Robert Redford's character, feeling like he has to take care of him because he feels at fault because he was stinking drunk and Mm -hmm. he couldn't save him. He probably could have saved him, but he was affected. And so... I really liked their chemistry because they're just like really like probably master- the best probably the best part of the movie. They're top class actors as well. So maybe that part and also when Morgan Freeman is Mitch is interacting with the little girl. Yeah, that's, that was sweet. He's got a good way with kids. It seems. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he had the. He has definitely the really push on him having a sympathetic soul. Mm-hmm. And I he's mean, he's the Yang to Robert Redford's Yin. Yes. Yang, yin, yin, and yang. yeah, yin and yang. <laughs> not the okay. yin yang twins. Yeah. It's, the, it's, it. it's the yin. Oh, and yeah. yang. oh, it's yin. It's yin. not yin. It's not yin. Oh, it's yin. People think it's yin, but it's yin. Oh, it's yin and yang. Okay. Yeah. But hey, you know what? This is a metaphorical, metaphorical classroom. Oh. Learning everything. Um, Joseph, did you actually fall asleep during this? Did I actually fall asleep? No, I no, so, was fighting, uh, fighting, for his, fighting sleep. <clears throat> yeah, he was fighting for his life. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's a, is it a nothing movie and I got nothing out of it? I also really didn't see why Morgan Freeman had to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like his character did anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all, but even if he is still in the movie, I, the the whole bear plot line felt strange. Yeah, I, it seemed like they were trying to tie all these things together, like with the bear attack and the dead son, and then the abusive relationship and the Robert waitress Re- the waitress thing. Yeah, the the whole daughter thing. Which I totally glossed over me. <laughs> was, yeah. uh, it was such like a, it, it was like. It was very fast. It just came yeah. and went. Yeah. And, but it just didn't quite link up. It didn't quite make the connection. I do agree with you with that because I was hoping that the bear being released from the cage was going to be like a allegory for 
something. It, it was. I it mean, was, it was supposed to be. It was an allegory for letting go of your hate, like self hatred. Yeah, but or then, letting go of hate for other people. Yeah, but then the bear is just out there uh, being ferocious and killing livestock. But it, but it didn't kill Morgan Freeman. It went right back. He was like, he smelled blood, and he went right for Morgan Freeman. But then he didn't. They had an interaction and it was gone. <laughs> I see you. Yeah, you see me. I, 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 the bear would not give a good goddamn. They, it would just, it would charge after him if he had the bloodlust that they described. How do you? How do you know? How do I know? Imagine if. Are like, you a bear? Imagine they have that interaction. They're like eye to eye, and then the bear just fucking kills him. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking that would be a better ending. An unfinished life, huh? Not anymore. <laughs> this life is finished. And he looks at the camera and yeah, winks. He's, he's like, I'm finishing what I start. What I'm finishing. I am. Um, I'm finishing. I think that if you were to take the bear and put it into the context of the themes of the movie, it's really easy to hate a bear because he's big and scary or whatever. And yeah. it, specifically, that bear is even easier to hate because it ripped up sweet old Morgan Freeman. Yeah. But the one person who should hate it is Morgan Freeman, is Mitch, and he doesn't. Yeah. He's, hey, can you feed the bear? I know she's just going to starve that damn bear. What kind of zoo is that, by the way? I know that was bullshit as Montana Zoo. I'm glad you brought that up because (laughs) they just bring this poor bear into this cage with uh, with no amenities at all, (laughs) and it just it's just sitting there on the on the bare concrete floor. And (laughs) why? This is why this you know what this is why I hate small towns is because they do they they (laughs) overlook the uh, they overlook these small things that make our society progress. You can and, listeners, you can send your hate mail to Tyler Noe. We'll have his address in this chat. That's right. You send you send it. I will respond back to every <laughs> single hate mail that's it'll be it'll be a letter like Charlie targeted at Charlie me. from Always of Sunny in Philadelphia. It's oh, mo- yeah, that's right. Mostly emojis. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it you know, off topic though, my whole family thinks I'm illiterate. But that was a that was a major topic of discussion at, at Thanksgiving. What was the last book you read? Oh, uh, let's not get into that. But let's okay. get into the, yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, I think, um, I think Jennifer Lopez, she, she, she does well enough in this movie. And she I, could have been anybody. She could have been any. It could have been any. any day it could have been player. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. I feel like I feel like they're interchangeable. Sandra yeah. Bullock and Jennifer Lopez. That's, that's a good. That's a good but, assessment. Yeah, I don't right. know why. I don't know. I just they okay. have a similar yeah. face structure. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. They're both Mexican. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't know if sandra bullock is mexican but I, I clearly i don't know, I don't know if, enough about her to i don't know if jennifer make, lopez is mexican i don't know either actually <laughs> she is from the block the block so. oh yeah the, where's the block brooklyn i believe she's from <laughs> brooklyn <laughs> um, i got some i got some trivia here oh okay. uh, really? trivia yeah i was drooling a little bit over that truck because the mercury truck oh the mercury it's yeah. pretty it's a pretty rare it's a pretty rare truck i thought it would be a rare truck yeah so mercury and ford are divisions of each other mercury is like the luxury version of ford in certain places like lincoln is but you can you can get like a mercury mountaineer is the same as like a ford explorer ford oh, escape or something okay. like that and this particular model, the 66 Mercury pickup truck, was only available in Canada. You can't get it in America. Oh, wow. So I'm That's why the, Mitch likes this. Yeah, I'm, mm. it was shot in Canada, too. So Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was shot in Wyoming. It, there was a, a bill passed where they had to sell it at every every available video store in Canada. Had to carry this. Oh. Yeah. That makes a lot. <laughs> coming all together. Also, the bear's name is Bart the Bear in real life. Bart <laughs> the Bear. Bart the Bear, yes. Nice. Oh, also, so it was a real bear. It wasn't like CGI or anything. In, it was, in fact. I don't think this movie had a budget to make a CGI realistic bear for oh, all yeah. the screen time that it had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Same bear from White Fang, Legend of the Fall, and The Edge. That's the... Uh, for Anthony, one of those. Anthony Hopkins ones. Which one? The Legend of the Fall. The Edge is like Anthony Hopkins and I think Alec Baldwin. The Edge. They're stuck in the, in the it's wilderness. Not about the U2 guitarist. No, no, no. it's not. <laughs> I think that's just Edge. <laughs> yeah, no, he just goes by Edge. He goes by the edging. Yeah. The edging. But he that one is, the bear is like a huge part of it. They, there's a bear in the wilderness and they have to stay safe. Mm. Um, there's a bear out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, so the weird out of place sex scene, the implied sex scene. Oh yeah, in where the, she's uh, like in the, the industrial park. Oh, with the cop. Yeah, oh, with, with the, the cop. cop. Yeah, yeah. Jo- Josh Lucas's character. She. Uh, that seemed like, very out of place. She's like, "Hey, big boy, can you give me a ride home?" And he's, like, "Hold on, I'm on the clock. <laughs> Let me get my gun out." And then they go and she, I don't they, remember it that they way. They take a t- they take a detour and then they end up in the back of the 
his Jeep Cherokee police Cop cruiser. Car, yeah. 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 And then you you hear a slight moaning. Yeah. Just a light. Just a, yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> But originally, there was supposed to be a sex scene taking place in the back of a pickup truck. Oh, God. And it was actually shot, but it was cut so they wouldn't get an R rating. Oh, I see. Yeah. I thought that sex scene was really out of place, too, because if you remember the conversation preceding that sex scene, she's, I'm only here for three weeks. I'm not looking to fall in love. And he looks over. She and can't she, help herself. She yeah, cannot she, help herself. She's and, a horny gal. And then she, it, I wonder, I really... I, I, I really wish they would have showed the... Com- I always love the conversations before sexual encounters because it's so awkward. What, like, how, how do you think Just that... Just like in real life. <laughs> how, do you, how do you think that conversation would have gone? She's sitting there for silence for a little bit while they're going down the road, and she's like, hey... Do you want a bone? Do, do you want to... That's usually how it goes. Do, do, you want to, do you want to pull over real quick? All you got to do... Can you, how can you deny that, you know, with Jennifer Lopez? She's... Tyler, you'd find you'd find a way to botch that. <laughs> Take it easy. Tyler. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I, yeah. Tyler's I like, I need to go home and take my medicine. <laughs> can you? Can we keep going? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 mean, I really have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he, he would be more. He would be more explicit though. He's. I ate chili earlier, so if you know what I mean, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I'd I have be, to go make my water. Like I, I, I would, oh God. I would, I'd be driving like a little bit over the speed limit. She's, like, oh yeah, do you want to go over into this industrial park and make some love and take our clothes off and rub against each and other? And then, and then I would just be like, I, I, you know what, I, I really have to get back home. I'm so sorry. It would, it would just be awful. It'd be a terrible mess. But Starsky, enough, Starsky and Hutch is on. <laughs> Okay, so Lost Starsky. No, wait, it's a TV show. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm speeding to get to Starsky. And yeah. Okay, okay. Paul Newman was originally in consideration instead of Robert Redford, but this was near the end of his mm. life, and his ha- ailing health ruled him out. Wow. Newman and Redford are friends in real life, so yeah. it's an easy, easy deflection. Were yeah, were. Oh, no, lo- no longer. Robert Altman was involved in the production early in the development, but Who's the that? fallout. He's like a director producer. There was a movie that uh, they sh- Morgan Freeman and Robert Redford were previously in a movie together called Brew Baker, which I really like that movie. It's about him like a, it's like a prison escape movie, or maybe not a not an escape, but there's Robert Redford's like living in prison and like a Walmart Walmart uh, version of Shawshank. No, nothing like that. Oh, okay. In in one scene, Robert Redford and Freeman are playing cribbage. And in The Sting, 1973, Robert Redford is also playing cribbage with Paul Newman. Oh, wow. And it all comes It's circle. a callback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then this the, the movie takes place in a, a fake town called Ishawua, Washington, <laughs> uh, Wyoming. <laughs> Ishawua. Is this supposed to be like a native's name? It must be. Yeah. yeah. That sounds fake as fuck. Ishawua. Population 1,432, elevation 5,388. And there's only two restaurants in the That's whole... That's mile, mile high. That's a mile high city right there. <laughs> Wait a minute. It is. <laughs> there's only two restaurants in the whole town. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, apparently this this is based off of a book, Mark Sprague's book. Oh. Mm. That's why he's only written three movies, because he adapted his own books into a movie. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to write uh, a book, and then I'm going to make a movie. Which He's double dipping. Which I guess makes sense, but... I feel like adapting a book into a movie is its own art. That's why the that's why the I think the Academy has two different categories: It's best screenplay, best adapted screenplay. Yeah. You know? Oh wow! I didn't even make two and two together. That's okay. what adapted means. You're taking yeah. a story that already exists and then adapting it into a movie. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the things I've been learning <laughs> on, on this here on the, show. On this show. Live. Why Morgan Freeman's character was off screen before the movie starts is mauled by a bear. We don't yeah, see it. Ton- years ago. We don't yeah. see it happen. Yeah, yeah. And he is forever ailed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's and he has, to, he has to take medicine for what? It's um, for his he's got pain. Di- diabetes now. It's not medicine. That was um, morphine. Yeah. It, so he's just in constant pain. Yes. Yeah. It, probably nerve damage from the bear attack, and then also if you see in the in like, leaning against the wall in his little cabin, he's got he's got arm crutches like uh, Walt yeah. Junior from Breaking Bad. Yeah. So he probably has limited mobility. Has difficult difficulty walking and also is in constant pain. Of course, he has limited mobility because you see the rope uh, yeah, the hanging rope. from, which I, I, I feel like you hear just for the zip line. <laughs> 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 That's funny. What? Yeah. So the movie comes in at a staggering hour and forty eight minutes. Feels a lot longer. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Double that. Yeah. And I, I watched. I watched it on Pluto and. 
it Same. made it even worse. I, it froze up on me four times, and I had to really? oh quit God. the app and restart it. It froze up on me once. Oh, I, I, Pluto, I, get your shit together, Pluto. I, I rented this movie. Oh, oh my gosh. You spent $4 on this? <laughs> yeah, I did. You have the option to watch it for free. I didn't. I didn't really. I was in haste to watch. Oh, this. I think he said he watched it at four forty-five. Yeah, yeah. He had plenty of time. I mean, he needed to finish the movie, and then sit around, gather for, my thoughts for four hours, and be late to the show. I wasn't yeah. late to the show. Yeah, you were early to the today. Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah, yeah. yeah but <laughs> proud of you. Proud of you, Tyler. Uh, I I would love to have a rope hanging down so I can just pull myself up. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> Yeah, I would sure. Yeah, tell that to all, every, people who suffer from bear attacks and very uh, ableist of you. Limited time. mobility. How is that ableist? That, I uh, would love to be as. I as, wish I could be in a wheelchair. They just wheel around all day. Yeah, exactly. I would not. I would not wish mm-hmm. that upon. But anyone. that's the equivalent of what you're doing. That's what you're what, doing. What, what you're putting a rope uh, above my head. Uh, Sorry, I, I, I don't know what to say. When you're a, a perfectly able-bodied human being, then yes. What's that? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not gonna get into this argument. But how uh, how dumb was that redheaded guy the so the, the ex boyfriend? I think Jennifer Lopez is even dumber for even being okay, in a relationship. Now, now, oh, victim now you're victim blaming. blaming. Okay. No, oh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, pile it up. Pile it on. Yeah, pile you're doing, it on. You're doing it yourself. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I just I'm get not. out of the way. You could just what run, are you run stupid? Why are you in that abusive relationship? Because <laughs> just what Peace said. I'm that, asking you, Tyler. I'm, I'm I'm not in an abusive relationship. Thank you very much. That's, but that's that's the mentality, though. You're like, are you dumb? Just leave him. Okay, I'm not. Si- that's what you said. I I'm She's, not. You I'm said, not. You I'm, called her stupid for I'm being not, with him. I'm not applying it to everyone who's in a an abusive relationship. Like just this one abused person. I just see. this one in this <laughs> specific fictional movie. What makes it different? Yeah, why is that different than actual people that are being abused in their real life and have a hard time getting away? Because it's a fictional movie. I'm not talking. I'm so, not. I'm so not generalizing were, everyone. So, I'm not. So if you make fun of fictional Jews in a World War II Nazi movie, that's not as it's not as bad as making fun of Jews in real life. No, that's not. That's okay. what you said. That's what you said. Uh, okay. All right, I, I don't think you guys are getting my point. Just, that, apo- just apologize and move on. I don't right. think you- I'd like. I'd like to address in a formal apology to everyone who is in an abusive relationship. I apologize. Except for the people sorry. who are in movies. Yeah. I did not mean it. Hey, that's- I think my point is being misconstrued. No, what, I don't what, think. It wait, is. wait. I, 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 I want to go down this road. What point? What? What point do you have? Why is she stupid? So there is a point, and maybe I looked into it a little bit. Too much. Okay. Where she kind she kind of like started thinking about going back with him, like when he w- rolled into town, like it okay. felt it. Right. <laughs> Continue. But like I said, I was probably looking into it a little bit too much because of how boring this movie was. I was trying to ex- ex- excite <laughs> myself in a way. So <laughs> I'm gonna take the positive approach because I feel like I've been very negative lately. <laughs> <laughs> what you exactly what you just said that's that's the trap of of abused people you have you're like he was so nice to me for all this it's only like this one or two times that he beat the fuck out of me in front of my friends and family and child or a verbally yeah. abused me and told me how okay, stupid mate, and bad you know I was. You no, know, no, I'm just saying that's that is the trap and it's and it's I'm not gonna talk say be like you're dumb for saying that because I used to think the same thing too when I was younger. And I'd be like, what's the hard thing? Just leave. He just be, he beat you up, you go. He beat you up, you go. And it's, if it was that easy, there would be no women in abusive relationships or men sure. in abusive relationships. Yeah. So it's a lot harder to leave to make that decision. And yeah. then also once you're out of it, you're like, it was comfortable. So this is a, per, a classic example of myself speaking without thinking. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I want to spit my water out. <laughs> you can't so, say this stuff when I'm drinking water. So, um, and the reason why I say that is, I didn't, I, I didn't intend on saying that the character was dumb for considering going back or staying with the guy. I think the way, I think what I was trying to portray was that it felt, it, 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 it did not feel real. Like it definitely uh-huh. felt. It felt like stilted acting, and it, it you felt said earlier st- that she was great. She was did awesome the whole time. 
Yeah, she delivered her lines great, and she emoted. <laughs> she was on good. set, I, I, I fully mean, dressed, hair hair combed. She was she was alive. <laughs> so I think I can't think, argue with that. She was breathing. So I think I, that that's that's where I was coming from. That's, is that's how I feel about this entire movie. Is it's a movie. It, <laughs> there were actors. It meets the runtime. Yeah. <laughs> what what bothered me is that she's portrayed. She she she's very naive. There's only one sequence of events is when she comes back home and. Uh, Robert Redford sitting at the dining table or something and like she breaks a plate and he was saying like oh that could have been my favorite plate yeah and it's like well first of all one how would she know that and two <laughs> he's just being an asshole because he's mad yeah. yeah he's grumpy he's mad at her because she in theory killed his son yeah is and responsible that, yeah. and and I I do like the redemption arc for Robert Redford's character because after that whole speech where she says, I killed him, mm -hmm. and then I killed you, or something to that effect. I yeah. can't remember yeah. like verbatim what was said. But it, I like the realization of him thinking she had to live with her killing her own husband inadvertently. It and would have been nice if I felt like that. But I don't even think it telegraphs that message either very well. No, it doesn't. But it can you, I give can I give a like an, an alternative movie that has, does it so much better? Hmm. We just watched Garden State again. Garden State. Brianna watched that. Played it to death when she was a teenager. It's a very important movie to her, mm -hmm. uh, according to her. And do you guys familiar? You know the movie? That's the I've is, heard of it. I've never seen. Is that, that isn't that Zach Braff's directorial yeah, debut? He wrote it yeah. and directed it and starred in it. Yeah, it's not a spoiler because it's just part of the movie. Is mm -hmm. he's he's clinically depressed and he's on antidepressants because his father prescribed them to him. And the, the reason you find out later in the movie that it's because and he was sent away to boarding school because his mom was in a wheelchair. All of his friends and family know this mom was in a wheelchair, but mm -hmm. what they don't know from school is that he was inadvertently the reason why she was in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and he was a 10 year old or something like that and was frustrated with her because she was always depressed according to him and he pushed her and their dishwasher was open dishwasher door was open and she Oof. tripped back over and hit her neck on the countertop and became oh. paralyzed and for the rest of her life until she died she was in a wheelchair i had no idea you saw the movie no, I didn't. I just said I was familiar with Oh, okay, movie. my bad. <laughs> and the, but the way that that character goes through it, you believe he feels a certain way. She doesn't seem tortured at all. She just seems like, and I'm the, here. And then wheelchair? She's, no, the Jennifer, Lo <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> oh. In this movie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jennifer Lopez. In <laughs> and, you said, and then you see that she I died. I, so. I forgot. In, in Garden State, you never see the mom. You, it's, okay. she's, she's, she's only spoken about. But, oh, okay. Yeah. In, in, but in, in this... In, <laughs> In this movie, in this movie, Jennifer Lopez doesn't even seem like a tortured soul at all. So yeah, it's like, that's a know, good point. She's like a, a drug point. addict. Yeah, she kind of kind of seems like she's. Just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you think know. you you think she's she has the spike in her uh, arm? I think because of the husband, no boyfriend. Yeah, influence. I think maybe coke. Yeah. Mm. He seems like a coke uh, dealer. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the only other movie that I know that guy from is Dreamcatcher. Me too. Yeah. I'm like, I, oh, that's the, sh the guy from the Shit Weasel movie. Yeah, I kept trying to put my finger on his weird face movie. because <laughs> I, I, he, he seems recognizable. I'm pretty sure he's done like he's done cameos other stuff. in he, TV shows. He, and he was, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he was he played Steve McQueen, very small part in one of the parties. Oh, oh. yeah. Damien Lewis. Wow. He seems like an actor. Like he has the face of an actor that seems like he should be in more movies mm -hmm. and. And you definitely recognize him when you see him, but it's yeah, like, I yeah. can I I didn't I couldn't tell you his name <laughs> before before looking it up. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 been in a bunch of stuff. Ooh, he voiced Phineas in Phineas and Ferb. He voiced Agent Double Zero. Wow, oh, nice. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> what a very colored career he's had. Dream yeah. Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. <laughs> what a Dreamcatcher. fucking weird movie. It's funny. I I watched that movie and then I I told my mom about Jonesy. it. Jonesy. That's his character's yeah. name. Jonesy. Yeah, Jonesy. I, I told my mom that I watched that, and she, she's seen it when when it first came out. She's a huge Stephen King fan, mm -hmm. and she's like, she's I saw, I remember watching that. I don't know if she saw it in theaters or whatever, but she's I remember seeing it, hearing it, it was adapted to in a movie, and I'm thinking, how the fuck do you make that into a movie? The book is because the book is it's long. It's the same it's thing. A long it's, book. it's a shit weasels. 
Yeah, it's, it's weird. Alien, alien invasion, and I'm like, yeah. Well, the whole like library thing and yeah, the head, that was weird. That, I, I didn't get. I didn't get yeah. it. it's like a body snatchers type thing. <laughs> I mean, over uh, all in all, this uh, unfinished life. Unfinished life. Yeah, back to unfinished life. It just it it <sighs> what it did for me was what Joseph said was I didn't even have to have a TV in front of me. Cool. Like, I I I could I could have just read about this movie and no, there's a well, book why don't you tyler why don't you why don't you just go ahead and give your, your grade oh we're done this? yeah let's just do it we're done yeah yeah okay that's I, I, a- i'm sure mitch is pull, pull the band-aid off cut the mic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put me out of my misery sorry um, sorry mitch i mean it's it's so hard to grade a movie like this i i didn't I, I I wasn't miserable watching this movie. I did not feel like it was an hour and forty eight minutes. You thought it went by faster? Yeah, I th- I thought it went by pretty quick. I was I thought to myself, that's it, that's mm. all. It's not a detriment to the film. I just think that mm. it could have. I it had themes that could have been expanded on more. I think if they had more time, like the writers and director, if they had more time with the story, it could have been a little bit more impactful. Or a better writer. Or a better writer, yeah. yeah. A better staff. But Staff? It, yeah. <laughs> I will give this movie a C-. minus. Really? C- minus for effort. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought that was The it. minus is for the effort? <laughs> No, no, the, the minus isn't for the effort, oh, okay. no, but the C is for the effort. So C minus for me. Okay. All right. Joseph, what do you give an unfinished life? You said this movie was inoffensive. It, yeah. There's nothing really mm-hmm. to it. Like, it's just a movie that exists yeah. and it doesn't, yeah. it's not polarizing yeah. in any way. Yeah. It's lukewarm. I spit it out. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> lukewarm. It's, it's, I was offended. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Mitch? This is what this is this is what happens, Mitch, because of the time that I spent watching this movie. <laughs> this hour and forty eight minutes, I could have watched. Were you building a desk? Something else? No, I was I was sitting on my couch. I could yeah, I could have been rebuilding. I took apart and rebuilt my desk, <laughs> and I would have gotten the same amount of info. Oh my god! All the perform. I don't know why either of these these three actors are in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Like, why did it have to be Morgan Freeman, Robert Redford, and Jennifer Lopez? It could have been, it could have been lifetime actors. It, yeah, I was just thinking that it could have been any lifetime player. Literally, could have been anyone. But it was just probably just to, for the name mm-hmm. to yeah. get people like, oh, he's in this movie, and oh, she's a new in Robert this movie? Redford movie. Wow, I love him. Yeah, it is very much like a senior citizen afternoon <laughs> movie. Like it's gonna be playing at at the home. It's, they're gonna have a they have movie night, and they're gonna show this mm-hmm. at, at the elderly home. The elderly, <laughs> and yeah, I, it's just it was not. It was uh, an offensive. So, movie. so give us a grade. Give us a grade. Like a, like a D. D. And I would give it an F, but I didn't. It, it's not like I hated the movie, but a D, a D because it did nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Big old D. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for that. So C minus from Tyler. D yes. from Joseph. I want to give this... And that's not to placate you, Mitch. Tyler, Tyler it's okay. Just it's not say, to placate Say you. your opinion and move on. Don't don't apologize for your grade. I didn't apologize. Mitch, I, I, Mitch I was just did, making Mitch, a statement. I like... it's When, when you give your uh, initial reaction, sometimes you're like, I didn't really like this movie, but it's not to say that other people can't like it, too. Sometimes, <laughs> and, it, and it's maybe for me, but if it's okay for you, like, <laughs> yeah, we, maybe, we get yeah, it. We yeah. get it. That okay. was a Will Forte uh, cadence you had right there. Oh, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We get it. It's your opinion. And my opinion is this is a C. It's a C. Yeah. Almost a C plus. Almost there for me. Really? Almost. Yeah. And and like it didn't it didn't land for me, but I'm not looking at it like this movie sucks or this movie's whatever. It's just like, all right, it was there, it was on. You know, I if you were to look take my pulse before the movie started and after the movie, it'd be exactly the same thing. <laughs> and I I think it, it felt like a movie. That if you're visiting your grandparents, or mm. at this point, if you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're at this point, if you're in your you know mid thirties or whatever, you're visiting your parents, mm-hmm. and they're they're watching a movie when you come in, and you're like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's that Robert Redford movie. I love it. It's Unfinished Life. You ever seen it? And you're like, no, I haven't. You sit down and watch it, and you go, yeah, this is what I was expecting to see my yeah. my mom watching or my dad watching right now. Yeah. So 
it's a grandparents movie. It's not a it's not a parents popcorn flick. It is a straight ahead grandparents movie. Yeah. I completely agree. And I will never rewatch this. Yeah. <laughs> we will I'll never watch it again. It's it's like it's like the definition of a shrinkflation where you get a bag of lays and there's three chips inside and it's all oh. air. <laughs> That's what and you just oh, no. It's in an hour and 47 minute bag, but there's only 10 minutes of movie there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, it's so been an email. This yeah. This, <laughs> this movie could have been an email. <laughs> Bears are not as bad as you think. Forgive yourself and others. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess let's go to the wheel. The wheel of destiny. Yeah. Yeah. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the wheel of destiny. All right. That's the wheel of destiny. And we've already taken the liberty of removing an unfinished life. I couldn't get it off the wheel fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it ahead of time. And for new listeners, we have the wheel right here. It is eight slots, two for Tyler, two for Joseph, two for myself, and two for the Patreon members. If you want to get on the Patreon, it's five bucks and up, and you get your choice of the wheel. Now, since we only have one quarter of the wheel yeah. covered by Patreon picks, sometimes it, we go these long stretches where we don't have any Patreon picks, and we're remedying that by we're doing an all Patreon bonanza for the next, like, f- however many however long, However long we feel like until we get to the... Yeah, yeah, they're paying us to hear our noise. Exactly. I feel like at least at least once a year they should be getting <laughs> their movie watched, and <laughs> some of these have been on there for a while. So yeah, I don't know if we've had the Patreon running for a year, though. It started this year. Actually, I think it's been like... We started in January of this year. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, we did. Oh. So anyways, so I guess at this point now, after we finish this, everybody's got theirs picked this week, this, this year. Oh. It has to have. Once we finish like this yeah. last cycle, it's going to hope back to Javier. We're pretty close to that. Yeah. yeah. Javier was the first Patreon member. I think Javi. Yes, thank you. So all that to say that we've replaced an unfinished life with deep cover from 1992 from two deep movies on there yeah from jason from i've seen that Mm -hmm. and uh, we have the other selection is deep murder from 2019 from Stu from Stu world order and swo uh, swo productions.com we're going to spin this wheel and it's divided right down the middle like this this half is deep murder this half is deep cover so let's give it a spin 50 50 this is what we watch next week i can't see deep cover it's deep cover. That was deep a tight spin. Cover. It was. It was. And it wasn't tight. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's take a look here. Deep cover. Deep cover. Deep cover. This is an older movie? I believe so. 1992, I think it was. Okay. Uh, deep cover. A uninformed. Let's see. Where's the or it's the synopsis here? An uninformed police officer is recruited by the DEA to infiltrate a drug smuggling ring looking to expand its operations. Oh, interesting. This is directed by Bill Duke. Um, Bill Duke. And it's starring Lawrence Fishburne, Jeff Goldblum, and Lyra or Lyra Angel. Mm. Bill Duke. He's Sounds like a basketball player. In, um, you're thinking Odell Webb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all plays a basketball player and everything. Um, no, it's 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 Bill Duke. He's the, in, in Predator, he's the guy that's dry shaving with the razor. Oh, oh, oh that guy. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, got yeah. the real tired eyes and mm-hmm. just a cool old he's dude. He's in Commando. Yeah. Is he also in Commando? He's in Commando. No, is he? Uh, he's in no. Predator. He's in Commando. X, okay. Yeah. X-Men The Last Stand and Exit Wounds are his top four. Yes. Yeah. So this is written by Michael Tolkien, Henry Bean. Tolkien? Yeah, Tolkien. Not Tolkien, just oh, Tolkien. Tolkien. And let's see if it's streaming anywhere. Deep cover. Oh, just watch. Yeah. I went to sleep. This is not <laughs> streaming anywhere. You are going to have to pay $3 for it on YouTube. That's fine. But we'll see how it goes. The genre is action, adventure, mystery, thriller, and crime. Did you already read the plot? I've been listening. But yeah, yeah, I did read the plot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's on a cover or something or other. Maybe a bit drugs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to say before we go? No. No, no Mitch. I'm not going to review Showa. It's not on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to put a nine-hour movie. I already banned Empire from the list. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's in um, the chat. I, I'm just I'm, I'm glad that we have people paying to hear us talk, and thank you. Thank yes. you for everyone who participated in the Twitch stream. Please check us out every Saturday. Yeah. I've been trying to be more consistent about posting the link. You know what? We, uh, we do a terrible job of promoting the Twitch, and that's okay. But I've been trying to do... But I, 
I have been mm-hmm. doing better. Yeah, ten minutes before we stream. Tyler, Tyler posts. A, he posts not not a link. He just posts. We're going live on Twitch. That's not true. That's not true. This <laughs> week I did. Today this you posted a link on Facebook. I did. Yeah. And it, and and it usually starts out with my show <laughs> that I created is going live right now. Watch it. Well, where's the line? With no, with no, okay, that's true. But anything else you want to say, Joseph? No. Okay. Thank you to our cool ass Patreons over on our, our cool ass yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, listener Stephen, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbett, and Chris. And we have all kinds of other Patreon members, class clowns, new kids, teachers, assistants, and whatnot. If you want to join up with that, it is middleclasspatreon.com slash middle class film class. Until next time. Thank you for joining us today as we crap all over Mitch's selection. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how deep cover is next week. See if we, if we can have, find some joy in that. Yeah. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MCFC podcast, and send us an email, MCFC podcast at gmail.com. Yes, and please follow us on Instagram at middle class film class and leave us a voicemail, why don't you, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at podcast MCFC and on TikTok at middle class film class. That's right. Follow us on the YouTube page. Go watch an unfinished life. Tell us if we're assholes. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> See you next time. See ya. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.